in a futuristic world overrun by Terminators, thinking machines threaten humanity's survival. But outside the cinematic world of make believe these nightmarish creations are dependent on the special effects artists who design and build them. And when it comes to crafting tough characters for the screen, Hollywood often turns to Stan Winston. Coming up, we'll see how the creative team at Stan Winston Studio engineered Jurassic Park's 9,000-pound Tyrannosaurus Rex. Learn how their robotic penguins fooled both audiences and the real feathered creatures in Batman Returns and follow the hair-raising evolution of Congo's handcrafted apes. We'll come face to face with some of Hollywood's most striking fantasy characters and meet the man behind them all, next on Movie Magic. films are sold on star power, that hard to define but instantly recognizable quality that holds an audience spellbound. Oh, yeah. Movie studios once put budding stars through finishing schools to polish their poise and personality before they appeared on screen. Today, one studio still grooms star performers, finally crafting and honing their images to ensure a winning performance. These fantasy characters are all creations of Stan Winston Studio. One of Hollywood's most sought after effects artists, Stan Winston has won four Academy Awards. For his work on Aliens, Terminator 2, and Jurassic Park. The superstar characters for these films and many others were produced in Stan's workshop by a team of gifted artists and technical wizards. Yet despite his success, Stan finds crafting designs for multi-million dollar movies not all that different from his early youthful efforts to entertain. I loved playing with puppets. I would love to have that dummy sitting on my lap and create a character through that puppet. And interestingly, I'm still a part of creating characters through puppets. It's a little different because it's now the magic of film. You like your stick? You want to when Stan arrived in Hollywood in 1969, his self-taught makeup skills won him an apprenticeship at Walt Disney Studios. Stan's mentor at Disney was Robert Schiffer, who has overseen the studio's makeup department for 40 years. Stan Winston was absolutely a genius. He would sit out there and come up with some f wonderful ideas. He would do paper mache heads of Mickey Mouse and Goofy and do them so beautifully. After completing his 6,000 hour apprenticeship, Stan created memorable character makeups for such acclaimed productions as The Wiz, Roots, and the Emmy Award winning The Autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. Stan's robot makeups for Heartbeeps brought him an Oscar nomination in 1981. Instead of traditional foam latex masks, he used gelatin facial appliances which gave the characters a metallic sheen. Not long after, Stan got a call from director James Cameron, who was planning his own robot movie, The Terminator. Jim had a piece of artwork, which is a painting that he had done of the endoskeleton. It was this metal, robot skeletal figure, which is exactly what you ended up seeing on film. Cameron's original plan was to film all the endoskeleton shots with a miniature puppet, using frame-by-frame stop-motion animation. I love the script, and I had said to Jim, it would be neat, I think, if we actually build the Terminator. The full-size robotic Terminator used for most endoskeleton shots marked a turning point for Stan Winston Studio 
as it moved beyond the limitations of makeup effects and into the world of animatronic puppetry. We use puppeteering because it's performance. The puppeteers are actors, bringing the character to life. So we use the technique, but we fool the audience by designing so that they don't look or move like puppets. The endoskeleton puppet was built to match Arnold Schwarzenegger's massive frame and weighed more than 100 pounds. Each joint of the skeleton was crafted from epoxy, chrome plated, and then reinforced with steel ribbing. The hands were cable operated, while the head and eyes were radio controlled. Following the huge success of Terminator, Cameron turned to Stan for an even more complex character on his next film, Aliens. The Queen Alien was a Jim Cameron design. She is based on the original H.R. Giger design from Alien, but she is the next generation. Cameron had the unique idea of animating the Queen by suspending two puppeteers from a crane inside the monster's body. To test the concept, Mars. Stan's team built a mock-up Queen out of foam core, broomsticks, and trash bags. Okay, pivot. Drag the legs with it. We shot this test and looked at it and went, it works. Okay, We're going to do it. And most people don't realize when they watch Aliens today, that that green alien coming out of that ship is really made up of a bunch of foam core and garbage bags. Ultimately, of course, the 14-foot-tall alien queen was made of more sophisticated materials. It's inventive puppeteering resulting in a character whose every move radiates sheer menace. Here! Here! The Cameron-Winston collaboration realized perhaps its most powerful moments in Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Many startling shots of the liquid metal T-1000 character were computer-generated, or CG, created at George Lucas's Industrial Light and Magic. What is less known is that a surprising number of T-1000 shots were filmed live on set using special suits and mechanical props built by Winston's team of artists and engineers. Action. The direction we took was that when the T-1000 was hurt or destroyed, when the image was created, we would create it. If something appears in that moment, we'll do it live. If it repairs, we'll do it CG. Early in the movie, the liquid metal composition of the T-1000 is revealed when a swarm of bullets produces only temporary splashes in his uniform. To accomplish this effect, Stan's team devised a mechanical chrome-plated flower device that would spring open when triggered off camera. Point. Check you later, baby. These were rigged to a vest worn by actor Robert Patrick under a pre-cut uniform. Many illusions created on set required animatronic puppets or body parts. While other fantastic images were accomplished with trick suits worn by the actors. One of my favorite shots is when the T-1000 is coming after Linda Hamilton near the end. She turns around. Robert Patrick turns back and he looks at us and there's, we call this the donut head. That was all live. That was a puppet. That was an animatronic head. What the audience knows is there are certain technologies involved, but they are so now brilliantly achieved on film that when something is CG, you don't know it. And when something is animatronic or robotic or puppet, you don't know it. Action. The smashing success of Terminator 2 firmly established Stan Winston Studio and set the stage for bigger, and badder characters to come. The artists at Stan Winston Studios spend hundreds of hours endowing each of their characters with a distinct look. But even with a beast as intimidating as the Predator, for Stan Winston, appearance is only a start. What creates a character is, in fact, less of what it looks like, much more of how it performs, what it does, how it acts. Once you buy into and accept that character's performance and how that character is telling the story, then the icing on the cake is how really neat that character looks too. 
One of Stan's most challenging assignments in creating a successful performance within an unusual appearance was in director Tim Burton's fantasy fairy tale, Edward Scissorhands. A great deal of thought went into the creation of the Scissorhands to give Johnny Depp the freedom to perform with these hands. And it seems so simple, but a lot of people, when they think of their hands doing scissors, they would do this, they're gonna cut like this. But it's no, that's not the point, because that's not how it's going to be free, because then you're very limited in what you can do with your hands. So, I'm doing this and I'm going, this is it, this is it. And that was it, that was the answer. This is how we designed them. The mechanical hands were essentially gloves with seven blades instead of fingers, the thumb and pinky being double-bladed. For Batman Returns, Stan was again called by Tim Burton, this time to create an army of absolutely lifelike penguins. This was an amazing job for us, to create these perfectly believable, organic replications of penguins. They were going to have to be in a scene, standing next to and acting with real penguins. And you're not supposed to know the difference. To create the avian army, Winston's crew first built 30 robotic penguins. Performance was achieved by movement of the nearly 200 mechanical parts inside each robot. Cables connected the birds to the puppeteer's joystick controllers, which operated head and neck movements. Then, to portray the more mobile elder penguins, six puppet suits were designed to be worn by little people performers. Winston's team dressed each bird in synthetic fur, styled and colored to appear as real feathers. It was a great challenge and it made us realize that we could in fact really duplicate real life. But the challenge in Winston's best known assignment was to bring the extinct to life. For his fantasy adventure Jurassic Park, director Steven Spielberg commissioned Stan Winston studio to create the look of the dinosaurs. The animal's believability would be essential to the movie's success. To start the process, Winston Studio concept artist Crash McCreary prepared pencil drawings based on the scientific hypothesis connecting dinosaurs and birds. My first problem was to redesign dinosaurs in a way that we could look at them as real animals as opposed to monsters. So we incorporated what the new theories are bringing in is that they were more bird-like than lizard-like, much more active. So I took basic designs of, of Tyrannosaurus rex and tried to give him more life, leaning him forward in running positions and things like that. Studio sculptors then translated the drawings into three-dimensional form. Even the film's computer-generated images, created by Industrial Light and Magic, were based on Winston designs. Several full-size robotic dinosaurs were built by Stan Winston Studio, including the ailing Triceratops, the small but nasty Dilophosaurus, and the voracious Velociraptors. John Rosengrant, a longtime associate of Stan's, was one of the artists heavily involved in the raptor's creation. For the raptors, we had a whole series of puppets. Biggest and most complex was the uh full-size animatronic, which he worked from the tip of his nose to the end of his tail. And that was a combination of cables and rods and uh, radio control. We had a close-up insert head for shots that didn't require the body. And also there was a pair of insert feet. An insert head of the friendly leaf-eating brachiosaur interacted with the movie's human performers. But the biggest challenge was creating the movie's giant star, a creature so large the Winston studio roof had to be raised to accommodate it. The Tyrannosaurus Rex rebuilt full size, 9,000 pounds of a completely full size animatronic robotic machine. As with all the dinosaurs, a full size sculpture was created from plastiline clay. The sculpture was then encased in epoxy to create molds. These molds were used to create the creature's skins, which covered a robotic skeleton constructed by the shop's engineering staff. 
The T-Rex's 20-foot tall, 40-foot long steel skeleton was linked by computer to a mechanical arm or telemetry device that controlled the hydraulic machinery. The thing that people will remember forever about the dinosaurs is how real they were because of how credible their performance was. They are actors in a film. They are not special effects. At Stan Winston Studio, creation of fantasy characters is a multi-step process, requiring design, sculpting, and mechanical engineering before on-set puppeteering can begin. When the assignment is to ready a vampire to be interviewed, a small army of artisans bring the most imaginative concepts to the screen. Separate departments oversee each stage in a character's development. This is the mold shop, the fabrication room. All the sculptures come through this process and get broken down by the various mold makers and technicians. And we also run the skins here. We fabricate skins out of silicone and foam rubber. The studio's high level of craftsmanship has attracted many of Hollywood's biggest productions. When director Frank Marshall and producer Kathleen Kennedy sought to translate the Michael Crichton novel Congo to film, they turned to Stan to create characters that were both lifelike and life-threatening. Most of the movie's animals are crafted to replicate nature, including this full-size robotic hippopotamus. Hippopotamus is a hippopotamus, and the only person that's involved in that design is us and God. So it's like, it's our job to make what we are duplicating as real, real. The hydraulically driven two and a half ton hippo is controlled by off-camera puppeteers. A one-handed telemetry device controls the head and neck, while a separate panel pneumatically operates the animal's ear, nose, and eye movements. The bulk of his body is fiberglass. We used the silicone for the skin of its head because of it being in the water. The hippo scene is filmed in a massive outdoor tank at Paramount Studios. Additional floating hippos are placed around the one million gallon pool to provide the proper background. The hippo attack sequence is filmed at night. With the camera positioned above the water, the cast is placed in rafts to paddle through the simulated river. One, two, three! As fierce as the charge appears, the hippo never actually touches the raft. The tipping action is achieved by four scuba divers hiding underneath the craft. As with the hippo, Winston's ape characters for Congo are to be as lifelike as possible, with one major exception. The gray gorillas are Michael Crichton's concept. The challenge of the gray gorillas was to create a species that doesn't exist, a species that would be new and a species that we would believe to a certain extent and also know that, in fact, this is our fantasy. These are the bad guys. Reflecting the true, gentle nature of gorillas is one of the film's leading characters, a sign language speaking mountain gorilla named Amy. Amy is the heart of the movie. She is the most complete fantasy character that we have ever created in the studio. Crucial to Amy's success was the creation of an animatronic head, capable of expressing a full range of emotions. Mechanical designer Richard Landon oversaw the construction of the radio-controlled, servo-motor-driven face. I'm operating the lip and mouth box. The strange head device is what controls Amy's jaw. What I'm doing with my fingertips basically controls what happens to her lips. There's two other puppeteers, one on eyes and one on nose, cheeks, and brows. A gorilla suit covered with thousands of individually hand-punched yak hairs is also constructed. An actress inside the suit performs Amy's body actions. A walk, a sit, a stand, a biped, all of those. As always, the ultimate effectiveness of a character comes down to performance. For Congo, primate choreographer Peter Elliott trained the performers under the direction of Frank Marshall. That's fantastic. Having lifelike animal characters that responded on cue made Congo a much easier journey to make. 
The Stan's Grill has really made it absolutely wonderful for me because it enabled me to be free in, in directing the movie as a normal movie rather than being shackled by limitations of it being a, a mechanical creature. With so many movie stars in his gallery, not to mention his four Oscars and two Emmys, one might think Hollywood would have lost some of its mystique for Stan Winston. But he remains enthusiastic about filmmaking and is still the ultimate movie fan. I love special characters. I especially love fantasy characters. And everything has been a slow progression in the ability for us to bring those characters to life from the screen. Now, I'm surrounded by all these great characters. And I walk in every day and I look at it and I go, wow, this is so neat. As long as filmmakers need special characters to tell their stories, there'll be a studio to create stars for them. For Stan Winston's studio gives life to unforgettable characters, combining art, technology, and performance to bring about total reality and unparalleled movie magic.